Gloria Stefan left her homeland of Cuba as a toddler and has never gone back. I wanted to find out what it would take for her to return. And why, after decades of turning her up-tempo Cuban rhythms into pop music hits, she's decided to try something new. Let's talk about, you've got a new album out called Estefan Family Christmas in which you and your daughter Emily and your grandson Sasha sing. And, and, and I want to talk specifically about a song that the three of you wrote called Thankful. Here it is. All the things in life that I really love, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. They all got the voice, don't they? And the timbre, right? Sometimes we couldn't tell who was doing which harmony after we mixed the record. We'd go, wait a minute, was that you? Was it me? Each in their own right. And my daughter, who is uh, mind-blowingly talented, I wish I, I could do what she does on a good day. Uh, but where did but, the idea for the album and for that song come from? 2019 Thanksgiving. Ever since uh, Sasha was a baby, we would put together a little show because he sings. He came with him. And Emily, him and I put together music to play for the family during after dinner. We do a lot of Beatles stuff because we love, all three of us love the Beatles. So I said to them, let's, to this time, let's write a little original chorus, just a little snippet, so that then, Sasha, you can go around with the mic and everybody can say what they're thankful for. 19, it was great. 2020, no Thanksgiving. 21, we do it again. And then we were getting ready our Christmas show for Christmas Eve. And Sasha says to me, Tutu, you know what? I, when I try to go to the high note, something is different. Something's changing. I go, oh my God, here comes the puberty it's train. puberty, yes. <laughs> yes. And I went to them and said, what do you think if we immortalize our little show, but professionally for a Christmas album? They love the idea. We three chose the songs. We picked the stylings we wanted to do. And I said, we will have to do this now if we're going to have it out by Christmas, because if we don't do it now, Sasha is going to sound completely different. And it It'll all be just... a baritone. Uh, exactly. And it all turned out so perfectly, as things tend to do when they're born organically. i got to say, a Stefan Thanksgiving sound better than most people's there, Thanksgiving. <laughs> there are a lot of music, a lot of dancing, uh, a lot of food, both American. That's my favorite meal, Thanksgiving. If I could pick one American meal to eat, it would be the turkey, the mashed potatoes, the sweet potatoes, all that. And then, of course, all the Cuban stuff that we throw in regardless. So it's a party. Well, you talk about Cuban. You have, are widely considered the most successful Latin crossover artist in history. A hundred million records sold, 11 top 10 hits, seven Grammys. How do you explain it? How do I explain it? We did it for love. I sing since I talk. It's uh, something that was my lifeline um, through very tough times. I had a rough childhood first, being here with my mother. My father went to Bay of Pigs. He was political prisoner two years. He came back. He joined the U.S. Army. He went to Vietnam. He came back with Agent Orange poisoning. And all through this, music was my savior. I would lock myself in my room with my guitar. I started playing at about eight years old. I took lessons and I would just sing and cry. And so my mom wouldn't see cracks in the armor. And it's the reason we do music. You, you, you talk about your heritage. You were born in Cuba. Your father participated in the failed Bay of Pigs invasion and spent a year and a half in Fidel Castro's prisons before he was allowed to come yes. to the United States. How strong is your emotional connection to your birthplace? It's very strong because my mother made it so. Uh, they thought they were going back, so it was exceedingly important that we keep our culture alive. Then, when they saw that it wasn't happening, it became even more important that we not forget. But the Cuba that I know is the nostalgic Cuba of my mother's life. I was two when I left, so I really didn't know Cuba. And uh, it's very different, I think, from the Cuba that is now in existence after 63 years of uh, after the revolution. And 
But and, I and still the regime have that. Of, of the Castro. Of the Castro. Well, I want to pick up on that because even after President Obama resumed diplomatic relations, a few years ago, you said you would not go back to perform. What would it take for you to go back to Cuba? A free Cuba, an actual free Cuba. You can have all the diplomatic relations you want. But for me to go, and I've been invited. I was invited I'm by sure. Pope John Paul to go with him in 97. And I respectfully declined. I explained to him that it was important that he go, but my presence would be a very political one because I've been very vocal against the regime. And he understood, but I'm Cuban. I can't stand in the Plaza de la Revolución in front of a Che Guevara and Fidel Castro portrait after what my father went through, knowing that when I leave, those people are going to be in the same difficult situation they're in. I won't feel free to say what I want to say there. I don't want to cause violence, and I don't want to cause a problem. So for me, it, it'd be very difficult. I would love to celebrate the day that the Cuban people are actually free to vote for, for who they want, to live the lives they want, to choose the careers they want, and to be able to express themselves like we do in this country. This year, you did a remake of the classic film Father of the Bride, yes. along with Andy Garcia. And this version had a good deal of Cuban culture in it. Very much. Hola, Ingrid, Chichi. What's cooking? I'm just trying to fix the ropa vieja. She added too much oil. Oh, it smells delicious. Theo Walter is here. Ropa vieja. Theo, why don't you stay for dinner? I love that. Mmm. <laughs> I'm curious, why did you all decide to do that, to have a lot of the Cuban culture in it? And was there any pushback from the producers or whatever saying, you know, this might not play as well in middle America? You know what? On the contrary, the uh, writers and producers of the film were Cuban. And when Plan B, um, Brad Pitt's company, got involved, they wanted it to be very legit. It was... Uh, Andy was Andy Garcia, a good friend of mine for over 30 years, was one of the executive producers. And it was incredibly important to all of us to be very culturally sensitive, to stay away from stereotypes and laugh with each other instead of at each other and portray more realistic view of what the Cuban from Miami has become after so many years. So when I got that script, I go, oh, my God, Father of the Bride, this is like iconic. We, we can seriously mess this up if we do the wrong thing. We're talking Spencer Tracy and Elizabeth Taylor. Yes. We're talking Steve Martin. Yes, indeed. And we go, we have to be real because if not, and people get that honesty. They really loved it. It, it did great. And we were thrilled. And plus to hang with Andy, uh, although I have to say the kissing part was a little tough because we're friends. I guess it's better than kissing someone I don't know. But we've been friends for so long. I shipped my husband out, not at the studio, out of state for that <laughs> scene. Because <laughs> it was, but he was lovely and it was very natural. We, we have a, a great chemistry, him and I.